In today's video, I'm gonna share with you an audio interface from Nuex called the NLive that can completely transform your computer and turn it into a full-blown dedicated guitar recording studio. Furthermore, it also works as a dedicated podcasting studio, live streaming solution, whatever the case may be. If you need great audio, this will deliver the goods. You pair this hardware with the software from Nuex called in live and you get a suite of electric guitar tones you can also use these effects if you plan on doing live streaming or podcasting to kick things off i want to share with you a jam track showcasing some of the electric guitar tones you can find in the n live software and then we'll do a deep dive on all of the different tones and effects before we get into it a huge thank you to dave from etone for sending out the new x n live for this review i really appreciate it if you want to check it out i'll link it down in the description box below here we go talk about the setup process included in the box we get everything we need to get going but all you'll need to grab is the provided usb cable connect it from the back of the new x in live to a spare port on the back of your apple mac or computer if you have a set of studio monitors already set up you can simply plug them into the two outputs on the back of the unit now if you want to play electric guitar you can just simply plug your guitar into the jack on the front you don't need to use one of the two xlr or jack inputs on the back of the unit this is really handy especially if you've got a dedicated setup this means you can just run the guitar in and you're good to go let's go through the three amplifier tones that we get built in you can customize these to no end with different types of effects reverbs delays all that kind of stuff we're gonna start clean go over to the drive and then over to the lead so this is clean with some hall reverb and the hall reverb really makes this tone come alive have a listen to this neck pickup Over to the drive amplifier model now with the gain at 19%. This is great for playing blues lead guitar or if you want to play some rhythm stuff, it will work for both. And then we'll crank the drive up in just a moment because this channel is extremely versatile. So this is neck if you just want to play some blues lead stuff. Over to bridge. I love the sound of that. Let us know what you think in the comment section. And now with the gain cranked at 71%, I've also turned the presence up and the bass down, and I've swapped out the hall reverb for a plate reverb. So this is bridge pickup. This is the same amp model as you just heard before, but with the gain up. Here we go. Turn down and it cleans up, back up. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, all right. Over to the lead channel, you heard this in the intro track. The cool thing about this is I've added some digital delay. It's a really great compliment for higher gain tones. And I've also made the plate reverb a lot bigger. Here we go. This is Bridge Pickup. <laughs> Let's take a look at each of the three modulation effects. So this is Chorus on the Clean channel. Here we go. Obviously some digital delay still on there, but it still sounds great. Over to the phaser effect on the lead channel. This is great if you want to get some of those old school kind of tones. <laughs> yeah. Up next, I'm going to show you a classic tremolo sound on the drive channel, but with the gain on that channel turned down. The depth is set to 18%. Let's give this a shot on neck pickup. Now you can set the rate or speed or depth or how prominent it is in the mix just by using the two sliders on screen. Up next I want to showcase each of the delay tones built into this starting with the modulation delay because it's one you haven't heard. Now this is with the level cranked so it's going to be very prominent. Have a listen to this, I think it sounds really nice. Yeah, all right. Over to digital delay with the level set to 37%. If you're a fan of the 80s, you can use that one right there. Over to analog delay. Now this type of effect is the same one I would use anytime I'm playing live. It's just a really great effect. It gives you a less perfect repeat back like you'd find with the digital delay that I just showcased. So. Let's have a listen to this. I also changed the reverb and just made it a whole lot of a smaller room sound now. Here we go, it's the neck pickup. Let's take a look at the noise gate. I've had it on the entire time and it's worked beautifully. Now, depending on your guitar and setup, you may need to adjust this to a different setting to me. But with these noiseless pickups, I've got it set to minus 77 dB. Now you might be saying, hey, why have you got a noise gate enabled if you've got noiseless pickups? Because I've got the gain dimed on the lead channel now and it's dead quiet. This is with the noise gate off. And back on. As you can hear with the noise gate on, it nullifies all the extra gain noise that you would generally hear. So have a listen to this. With the noise gate off. And back on, ready? Just clamps down nice and smoothly. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of how the new XN Live works, starting with these three buttons over here. So the 48 volts button is your phantom power button. If you're using a condenser microphone or a shotgun microphone like I am right now, this needs to be on, otherwise the microphone won't function. The on-air button is currently active, which means audio is being recorded over USB. Now say, for example, you're live streaming and you need to sneeze, you can simply hit the on-air button and it will mute your signal. If I mute it now, you're not going to hear my voice, so I'm going to leave it as is. The reverb button works in conjunction with the NLive app. And as you can see, I've got plate reverb selected. You're not hearing any reverb right now, but if I 
roll up this send that's on the channel of my vocal here, you're going to hear some plate reverb creep in. This is great if you want to record on the fly with effects in real time. So if you're recording a drummer, for example, you can get a really great plate or hall or room reverb, whatever the case may be. You've got all these different options here on the app. To connect to the NLive, all you need to do is hit the pair button here. You can then go into your phone's Bluetooth options and connect to the device. It popped up straight away and it connected the first time. Over here, we have our mix control. This allows you to get a blend between the playback signal and the real-time recording. So say, for example, I'm singing over a recording that I've got or a song or whatever the case may be or doing a solo. I need to hear a little bit back of what's coming back through my speakers or headphones. And I also need to be able to hear myself play. So this sets the level between what's being recorded to the left and your playback volume to the right. These two controls relate to each channel's volume. So if I turn this down, my voice is going to start coming down in the output mix. And as I turn it back up, it's going to get louder. This doesn't affect the gain control here at the top. We get two preamp gain controls over here as well. So if we need more signal going in, we can turn these to the right. You can stream music and also plug a phone in via a 3.5 millimeter jack. These two controls for the mobile out control two separate things. The top one controls the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input that we see on the back. And I'll show you that in just a moment. And this one acts like your overall streaming volume for your phone. So it acts very similarly to this control that I just showed you before. As I turn it down, it will reduce the overall volume. The front panel is nice and convenient. We get our guitar input on this side. You can also use this with bass if you so choose. We get a headphone, microphone, and headphone out. So if you've got one of those, you can use that. As you can see, I'm plugged into one of the two provided 3.5 millimeter headphone outputs. And we get two dedicated volume controls one for both. I think this is a great addition. As you can see on the back of the unit, I'm using one of the two XLR microphone ports that also double as line input levels. So you can plug a jack cable in. Say for example, you're recording a keyboard, you might wanna just plug it into both of the ports so you can get a stereo recording. If you've already got a set of studio monitors, you can simply plug them into the L and R output and then use this big dial to control the volume of your speakers. As you can see, I'm using this USB port down here, which allows me to power the unit completely. We get a 3.5 millimeter TRS connector here, which allows you to connect your mobile phone to the new XN Live, and then you can control the volume using these two controls here. I'm also a massive fan of having LED indicators when it comes to our input gain. We get a set over here and also for the channel itself. I've just grabbed a selection of microphones. We're gonna test out how it sounds for podcasting. Now, in my headphones, I've got the volume all the way up. It's not super loud, but it's loud enough that I could get by without having to add any extra effects thanks to the app. Now, the cool thing is we can add a compressor and I'll turn that on right now. And this is with the compressor on, so it's much, much louder. It does raise the noise floor up slightly, but it's still very usable. I'm gonna turn that back off. We're gonna go over to the EQ and turn on the thick sound, which I like the sound of. And now that is on. So if you want that big, chesty, full voice, you can run the thick EQ thanks to the app. And this is the kind of sound you can get. I really like this. It sounds smooth to my ear. I dig it. And now listening to the Rode NT2A large diaphragm condenser microphone without any additional effects. So this is how it sounds going directly into the sound card. The great news is when you compare it up against a traditional dynamic podcasting microphone with phantom power on, I can turn the gain back to about half and I get a much bigger louder sound in my headphones. Now, if I turn on that EQ curve that I showed you before, the thick preset, it sounds unreal. This is that podcasting sound. I'm a big fan of it. Let us know what you think of the audio quality. And now you're listening to the Rode M2 microphone, which is a live performance condenser microphone. That's right. It's not a dynamic microphone. It's a condenser mic. And I love the sound of this. I use this anytime I'm recording with my band. Now, if we turn on that thick EQ again, this is how it sounds. So you can get Excellent professional spoken word voice stuff just by using this straight into the end live from Nuex and you get great quality audio. And now you're listening to a shotgun microphone. This is the Saramonic Soundbird T3 shotgun mic. I'm going to turn on the thick EQ curve again and have a listen to this. This is fantastic sounding audio to my ear. It's a great simple setup if you're running phantom power. This device will have no problems powering any range of microphones. All right, let's wrap this up. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the new XN Live personal broadcasting console. This thing has completely surprised me. The N Live app paired with this unit will give you exceptional electric guitar tones that you can use for recording or layering up a demo. 
whatever the case may be. And if you don't want to use those, you can simply just mic up your amplifier in the old conventional way. Or if you've got a two notes cap door X or whatever the case may be, you can just plug that directly into here. When it comes to audio quality, I think the new X does a really great job. I would have no complaints using this with a shotgun microphone, a condenser microphone, or any other number of mics. The only one it did struggle with though, was the Rode Procaster, which really requires something like an SE Dynamite Fethead or Cloud Lifter to get the gain up to an appropriate level. This is very common for a lot of these consumer grade sound cards. They're not really designed to push something like a Shure SM7B or a Rode Procaster. If you plan on doing any type of live streaming, I love the on air button. You can mute your signal going out over USB. That's always good. When it comes to build quality, I love the fact we get LEDs both on the channel that's active and also as a master out. This is awesome. It allows you to really get a visual representation of what's going on. And of course, I can see my levels in my DAW. Being that this does have Bluetooth connectivity, I love the fact that I could listen to music through my phone on my studio monitors without having to hook anything elaborate up. This is just a really cool addition. And of course, you can use this for different types of scenarios. While I haven't tested this for PC, if you're a Mac user like I am, you can simply plug this in and you'll be in business. All you have to do is select the audio interface and you're done. Thanks again for watching, folks. My name's Shane. If you want to check this out, I'll link it below. Catch you soon.